Good morning, our Savior. What a joyful beginning that was. Thank you, Chip. So this morning, we have word that Comporium is acting up. I know that's never happened to any of us before, ever. But if you know the angel in charge of Comporium, you might lift up a prayer. I don't think St. Anthony covers it under lost things, but it's worth a try. So if something happens, please know we'll keep going and it will be on YouTube later, but we hope that you can all stay with us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside he, to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Masters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of this land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, 
to the country of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought them people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. This morning's psalm is a portion of Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45c. Let's read it in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. Hallelujah.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come from with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. NPR once aired an article where economist Shankar Vandantum described research describing economic progression in China and the United States. But he first reminded listeners of an early psychological experiment with marshmallows. In its simplest form, he said, you bring a kid into a room and you offer her a treat like a marshmallow. And you tell the kid, if you wait for five minutes without eating this treat, you can then have two marshmallows. Now, the reason this experiment got famous, Ben Dantum continued, is that the kids who were able to hold off eating the first marshmallow for five minutes had better educational outcomes. They had more successful careers years and years down the road. There have been a lot of twists and variations to the marshmallow test, but the basic idea is this ability to delay gratification. Doing the hard thing first to get the payoff later is a fundamentally powerful thing. This research apparently correlates with backing into parking spaces, which 88% of the Chinese do with elaborate care, but only 6% of Americans even try. Hi, I'm Janie. My beloved husband is one of those 6%. But to be fair, he is absolutely better equipped to achieve delayed gratification than the rest of us. Peter does not understand this concept at all. Last week, he was proclaimed as the rock, when he recognized Jesus as the son of the living God. This week, the rabbi rebukes him more harshly than he ever will Judas. He expects more from Peter. This is the first time in Matthew that the messianic prophecy is revealed, and Peter cannot bear to think about it. The coming of the Messiah was supposed to be all about victory and deliverance, not about pain and suffering. Peter has yet to comprehend doing the hard thing for a better payoff later. It is no accident that we hear today the opening conversation between Moses and God. Moses has turned his back on the riches of Pharaoh after having killed an Egyptian who had mistreated the Hebrew slaves, and he is enjoying his new life in the desert of Midian. He has married and is keeping the flocks of his father-in-law, Jethro. This is the new simplicity. He has it all figured out. He knows who he is and who God wants him to be. Egypt is far away, and he embraces this life of simple joy. But 
We all know what happens when we think our lives are in order. We do not expect the good life to last here. The world proves itself every time. And so it is perhaps no surprise that life becomes less simple for Moses when a bush that is burning but not being consumed appears in his path. Few of us would walk past that and Moses does not do so either. And when he stops to ponder, God calls him by name. When that happens, the only possible human response in faith is, here I am. The Exodus story is the opposite of instant gratification. And like all of God's work, it is not entirely clear to those encountering it. Moses knows it will be a challenge, so he stalls. If I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What do I say to them? God replies, I am who I am. This feels exactly as comprehensible as a Messiah whom one expects to embody victory and glory but who instead will embrace suffering and death for a greater glory than we could ever ask or imagine. Susan Butterworth reflects that one of the great paradoxes of Christianity is that the Messiah must suffer and die before he is raised to eternal life. Jesus even issues his instructions to the disciples in the form of a paradox. For those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. One of the blessings of the Anglican Episcopal outlook is that we are more comfortable with paradox and mystery than some other denominations. But all Christians exist in the thicket between crucifixion and resurrection, in the already, not yet. We fall so easily into the trap of wanting the path of least resistance. We want the closest parking space. We want prime delivery on everything, whether it's Amazon or not. These are stressful days. We surely deserve some comfort. Perhaps that has been the appeal of some of the large program mega churches, places where you can get what you think you need with much less effort. Today's lessons remind us that the easy department is run by someone other than our Lord. We should do the research on the business owner before we buy the goods. Just as with Peter, Jesus is expecting more from us. We were built for relationships, and the longer I live, the more I understand that no relationship, which really matters, reflects simplicity, ease, or convenience, not our relationships with each other, and certainly not our relationship with God. But they are so worth the effort. They are also the best part of these times in which we now find ourselves. One of my favorite lines from the Chronicles of Narnia is, Aslan is on the move. The name God shares with Moses is actually in the verb form. This suggests a dynamic and outgoing concept of God, reflecting God's activity in history, rather than simply describing God's eternal being as self-contained and changeless. We must remember that our God is constant, but never stagnant. And so, as we defer our marshmallows for just a bit longer, I encourage you to just go for it. Ignore the heavy sighs and the eye rolling of your passengers and back right into that parking spot. Spend a bit more time and effort pondering what really matters. Be ready to move as God calls you. We will live best and most easily in this world when trust is our foundation. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page five of your printout. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially those on our prayer list. Allison Taylor, Mike Murray, Francis Rouse, Marshall Rouse, Marion Mannheim, Jenny C. Myers, Lori Benson, Suzanne Smith, Alex and Kay McCallum, Bobby Lee Wilson, Ella Green Smith, James Davis, Darren Spencer family, Jim Clower, Ellen Ringer, Jules Mangello, check me again. Ellen Seward. Pray for those in the military. Cameron Thomas. Pray for those who have died. Christine Spencer. Bill Elmore. I now invite you to unmute yourselves and offer your own prayers. You may also use the Zoom chat box for your prayers. Please mute yourselves again at the end of the prayers. Chuck Patterson. Jason Stegall. Ma 
Maddie Horn and um, Adele Greenfield. For the victims of Laura, for the victims of the California fires, and for the victims of the injustice that's going on in this country today. Are there others? Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask one only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I welcome Buddy Tiedemann as your vestry person of the week. Good morning. I'm Buddy Tiedemann, a member of your vestry. Thank you for worshiping with us today. I urge you to read the eCorn on Thursdays, which contains many uh, announcements, and there'll be important things coming up uh, as the weeks uh, evolve with changes in the church and things that are happening. Uh, today, I want to mention a few things uh, of importance, certainly not all of them, others are in, contained in the announcements. The, the adult forum, forum is back and will zoom at 1125. The Wednesday Bible study group will resume on Wednesday, September the 9th. EFM registration portal is now open and you can contact Shannon Wilson about that. There's a plan for a drive-in donation to be September the 12th in the church parking lot and more information about that will be upcoming in the announcements. Again, I ask you to please read the eCorn for other announcements and details. It's very important to read this eCorn weekly to keep up with important messages. And now, thank you again for worshiping with us. Let us celebrate Christ, serve Christ, and share Christ. Thanks, buddy. Just two things to add to that. I think the EFM portal is closing tomorrow. So definitely, if that's something you've been praying about, you might want to answer God's call to do that today rather than waiting. We hope that you will want to join that. It's a great group and it's amazing work. Also, I usually use the treehouse that comes out on Tuesdays for a kind of meditation. But in these next few weeks, when we have a lot of other things going on, there actually might be important information on Tuesdays as well. Obviously, anything that is really significant, like what to do if you want to be one of those that comes back to church when we get that figured out, all of that will also be on the website. Thanks, buddy. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be careful as you go into the world, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and one another, for we are the dwelling place of the Most High. Be alert and be silent, for God is a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>